how to use the sign rule. So firstly, what is the sign rule? So if we take any triangle, we're going to label the sides with lowercase letters A, B, C, and we're going to label the corners with uppercase letters A, B and C, such that the capital A is opposite the lower A, capital B is opposite lower B, and capital C is opposite lower C. If we've got this, then the sign rule states that A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. We can use the sign rule to find missing lengths and angles. If we look at this triangle, we've got two angles, 35 degrees and 70 degrees. We've got one side 8 centimetres, and we've got a missing side C. We can use the sign rule because both the 8 and the C are opposite given angles. So here's the sign rule. Putting our values into this, we get that C over sine 35, which is the opposite angle to C, is equal to 8 over sine 70. Again, 70 is the opposite angle to 8. Multiplying both sides by sine 35 gives us that C equals 8 times sine 35 over sine 70, which equals 4.88 centimetres to two decimal places. Let's try this again with another example. So again, we've got our pairings of angle and opposite side. We want to find x. So here's the sign rule. We've got to be careful now because there are three sides labelled on this triangle. All we need to do though is remember that we always use the side which is opposite a given angle. So x over sine 41, because they're opposite, and 31 is opposite 86 degrees, so that's equal to 31 over sine 86. We don't need to use the 24.8 at all. Multiplying both sides by sine 41 gives us that C equals 31 sine 41 over sine 86, which is equal to 20.39 centimetres to two decimal places. So far we've been using the sine rule to find missing sides, but we can also use it to find missing angles, such as in this example here. So again, note that on the triangle, we've got the pairings of opposite angle and side, so we can use the sine rule. We've been using the sine rule in this orientation so far, but if it's a missing angle, it's often easier to rearrange this by effectively flipping those fractions upside down and using it in this form, which is sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. So putting our values in, we get that sine A over 12 equals sine 85 over 15. Again, being careful to use angle and opposite side in the same fraction. Multiplying both sides by 12 gives us that sine A equals 12 sine 85 over 15, which is 0.796. Taking the inverse sine of both sides gives us that A is equal to 52.84 degrees, again to two decimal places. Let's try again with this example. So here's our triangle. We've got the pairs of missing angle and missing sides, which are opposite each other. So sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. Putting our values in give us that sine B over 5.9 is equal to sine 86 over 21.5. Multiplying both sides by 5.9 gives us that sine B equals 0 0.273. And taking the inverse sine of both sides gives us that B is equal to 15.89 degrees to two decimal places. So to recap, we've got any triangle. If we label the sides lowercase a, b, c, and we label the angles of uppercase a, b, c, making sure that the uppercase of each letter is opposite its own lowercase value, then a over sine a equals b over sine b equals c over sine c. Or if you're trying to find a missing angle, we can flip the fractions upside down to get sine a over a equals sine b over b equals sine C over C. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.